Hi, I'm Jason Mears and this is the History of the Data Centre. This will be a collection of short videos going from the 1950s right up to the present day. Um, we're going to do it in a few different sections. The first one will focus on files and folders and filing cabinets, the original way that we stored information inside companies. Then we're going to move on to computer hardware components and all the components inside a modern day server. We're then going to go with the evolution of the data center from the 1960s to the 1990s. And then we're going to move on to evolution of the data center 1990s to the present day. So we'll start first with files and folders. So the story starts with filing cabinets, which have around, been around since around about the 1880s. Um, where we have paper files grouped together and sorted into folders where you'd usually arrange these by things like surname, employee number, customer or supplier and all these folders are arranged into drawers usually by alphabeti alphabetically or by date or by customer or by project um, and different filing cabinets are used for different things and different departments usually have their own set of filing cabinets that are only used by themselves and sometimes there's a duplication of data between them and you typically find these in businesses wanting to store information in files and folders. So what's good about a filing cabinet? Well, it sounds silly to say, but it's highly available. There are no reboots required with a physical filing cabinet. It's highly secure. You need physical access in order to use a filing cabinet. And the low maintenance because I've never had to do an update or a patch on a filing cabinet. So if we're going to replace the traditional filing cabinet with something electronic, we need to make sure that it's at least as good, if not better. So the areas we can improve are things like these, where um, the things that are bad about filing cabinets are that the manual, everything must be done by hand. You can't get any help from a computer or an electronic system. Um, a file can't be shared between multiple people at the same time or in, the, in more than one location at once. Um, so, and if you want to use that file, you have to physically be in the same location as the file on the folder. And it's not easy to do disaster recovery, because the only way to do that is to copy or duplicate by hand every file and folder and store it in a different location. So when we started to digitize um, and convert information into electronic information, um, it allowed us to share files with multiple users, process them automatically, and it also meant that we could use computers or machines and technology to do things with them, to sort them, to organize them, to calculate things from them. It also meant that we could do backup copies of files for disaster recovery. But before we can do any of that, we've got to convert them from paper into electronic. And the kinds of companies that wanted to do that were basically just any business wanting to move from paper files and folders onto electronic versions. And the way we did that was we made electronic copies of files. In most cases, we converted paper files into electronic copies. It may be that we retyped the information or we scanned the information, but eventually we got rid of the backlog. And then from then on, we started just making sure that all new information was stored electronically. And once we've got them stored electronically, we can now store these files on a network and we can share them with multiple users and multiple locations using something we later go on to call a file server or a computer that can share files over a network. Because of this, we can share them with other users. As long as we're on the same network, multiple files have access to the same information at the same time. And we're also able to make backup copies of files for disaster recovery or archival purposes because it now an electronic copy can be made just as easily as the original. So the benefits it gave us that we could share this information between locations. So whether it was any of the three buildings at the top, the office buildings or the factory or the workers home. Um, because now files are now accessible in more than one location, we can share between offices, factories and home workers. So typically any business with multiple locations or home workers saw the benefit from this. But it also means that we can share them between multiple different devices. So previously where it, a company was lucky just to have one computer for the whole company and then a department would buy a computer and then individuals had a computer. We're now at the state where not only does each person have their own computer but they may have multiple devices. So they may have a desktop and a laptop and a tablet and a smartphone. Um, and depending on where you are and what you're doing you might use different devices at different times of the day. So now that files are accessible by more than one device, they can be viewed and modified on computers, laptops, tablets and smartphones. 
and this is of interest to any business with mobile workers or a bring your own device policy. So what makes all this possible? What gives us the ability to store files electronically, access them in multiple locations and from multiple devices? Well, it's all down to computer hardware. All the things that you see on the screen now go towards making a modern server and in the next section we're going to explain how that's done. So we'll move on to that in the next video which will be section 2, computer hardware components.